Welcome to the latest edition of Red Army TV. It's not the brightest of weeks, is it? The borough down. We have been relegated. Uh, with me in the studio to chew that over, the Chelsea performance. Well, not the Chelsea performance, but the borough performance against Chelsea. But we'll look ahead as well. Marky Farnham from Teesside Rangers. Mark, you're a, a semi-regular. Welcome back, mate. Good evening. And Kyle Lund, big borough fan from the borough. Hello, mate. Good to have you on the show. Um, I'll start with you, Kyle. Uh, first and foremost, we've got to ask relegation. What's, what's, what's your feelings? Uh, a few days after the event. I was listening um, to John, John Hendry actually, and he made a good point. It's not the end of the world. I think you know it's it's disappointing, but obviously I think we've still got a good foundation. We've still got to keep, if we keep the core group of the team. I think fundamentally, if we put the money in, we've got a good chance to come back up. I think straight away. But again, it is it is a disappointing. It took seven years to get there, and took three hundred and sixty six days to get back down. But it is what it is, and I've still got hope that obviously next year we'll... We'll, we'll dig deeper into your hope, mate, a little later in the show. Uh, <laughs> Mark, pain-wise, is, is it still as painful as it was on Monday night? Yeah, I mean, I think we all knew, didn't we? We, we all expected it, to be fair. But, uh, you know, I, I disagree a little bit. I feel a little bit let down as a fan, to be fair, mm. um, by the club, to be honest. And, and I feel let down because I thought we were going to give it a right good go, and I don't think we did. Yeah, well, we'll come on to it. Well, we will. We'll, we'll plenty of chance to, to chew the cut over that. Let's let's have a look at the performance itself at Chelsea. Uh, what did you make of it? Um, to be honest, I, I thought playing the team that Chelsea played, I, I thought the body didn't do half bad. I thought in spells we were OK. I just think when you look at the Chelsea team, they're at the top of the league for a reason. You know, the, the discipline, they're well organised. Um, and in spells when we try to break them down, yeah, you know, the but it worked, but we just didn't have enough reinforcements to be fair against a team like that and the pressure the player they were under as well. Mm. But weren't they under pressure as well to to get that win because they needed to win two of the last three to to ensure the title? Were they just better at the pressure, better all round than us? Effectively, that's where they are. Where they, it's the reason where where they are. You know, they're, they're they're top of the league and unfortunately, where what is it, it's nineteenth? So they're obviously able to hand that pressure a lot better than what we are, aren't they? Uh, ultimately, but like I said, I don't feel it's going to be the end of the world. And I think I mean, there was some real, I don't think, great performances in that Chelsea, uh, Chelsea game. Traore was 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 one of my ones particularly. Um, but again, well, good or bad, wasn't a good performance from yeah. Traore. I don't think he's, he's he doesn't have no no finishing. No, he's got no no finish towards the end of his product. A lot of pace, a lot of power. But for me, that's probably about as far as you can go. You're nodding, Mark, and you coach players. I know it's different level, Teesside Rangers, to the Premier League, mm. but the basics and the principles must still be the same. I mean, what, what do you make of Traore? Uh, to be honest, I, I couldn't agree more with, with Carl, to be fair. I mean, I just think his end product is not there. Do, do I think he's work in progress? I think yes. 20 um, years old? 20 years old. Depends when, what we're looking at. As a Premier League player, is he there? No. Championship player? Quite possibly. To move on to a uh, Premier League player, definitely. Uh, skills in abundance, just at the minute, just doesn't cut it against the bigger sides. Against the lesser sides, gets away with it. You know, against the bigger sides, he was shown really on against Chelsea. Uh, a team that were in, linked with him mm. not so long ago as well. Yeah. Um, one interesting thing to note, I noticed it when I was watching the game live, Conte at the end applauding Borough fans. That was a nice touch. That was outstanding, to be fair. And it shows the mark of that man, the way, the way that he's got that team playing. Because I don't think in my time I've watched Premier League or any football have I ever seen another... I've seen coaches applaud fans and players. I've never seen a coach go and console every player and then applaud the fans for so long from the opposing side. It was a mark of the gentleman, to be fair. Yeah, it was. It was a cracking, cracking thing to see. I mean, I, I, I must admit, I had to spool back on Sky and then play it again. I'm thinking, is he applauding the Chelsea fans? Nah, let's go back and... Yeah, he was. He was definitely having a go at the Borough fans and it was good to see. Social media, as you'd expect, has been uh, pretty red hot this week. Uh, Matt Bland's been out there with the cameras, getting a free coffee as well, to see what you've had to say online. Thanks very much, Dave. We're back here off the ground coffee shop in Middlesbrough with your social media comments. And the main talking point this week was, of course, Middlesbrough's defeat against Chelsea, which has seen as being relegated back down to the championship. So to start off with Jack Pert, he said, Chelsea on the verge of winning the Premier League, Borough on the verge of the championship, and the Middlesbrough voices are all you can hear. That's in respect to the Middlesbrough fans who you could hear singing loud and proud on uh, Monday's match. 
Mendieta, former Borough player, said sad to see Borough relegated and for all the unconditional supporters that have been there for the team throughout the season. All about the Borough, we do have the best fans, 3-0 down on a Monday night, down in London, getting relegated and still singing and support loud and proud. Take a bow. And finally, 12th man Borough said, we will return UTB. Keep your social media comments coming in at Borough Red Army. And if you want to email us, studio at redarmy.tv. And also, if you want to get your photograph here in our picture frame, then send them to studio at redarmy.tv. This is Stephanie, who is a personal friend of mine. And sadly, she's uh, very poorly in hospital right now. So I'm sending all my love and prayers to you. Back to you, Dave. Cheers for that, Matt. That's what you had to say on social media. What about the ex-Borough players around the world? And they are around the world now. A uh, couple from them. Uh, Paddy Bamford, who's not around the world. He's on Teesside. Uh, at Patrick Bamford said, Got it isn't the word. Thanks to the fans. Been brilliant once again. Sorry we couldn't do it for you guys. Uh, Mikkel Beck, who's uh, a pretty decent football agent now, I believe, in Denmark. Highly respected. Uh, the old Borough striker, of course. At Borough, we will follow you until we die. Hashtag fight till the end. Robbie Musto, my old mate from America. He's doing well in Connecticut. Uh, it's so bloody hard to stay in this league. The club is very strong. Learn the lessons, regroup, refocus and return very soon. And finally, the Wolfman, the Slav, Bernie Slaven, a man of many words, tweeted, Blue Murder. What do you mean by that, Bernie? You'll have to tell me, mate. Um, that's what the players have had to say. Obviously, there's a lot of devastation among fans, a lot of disappointment. The fact we've lost our Premier League status, just a couple of games left now, and then we're back down in the Championship. Kyle, um, where did it go wrong this season? I think for me, it was just before the December point, effectively, when Gibson didn't, didn't get short of cranker, when I think he should have, personally speaking. Um, He'd done well up to a certain point. I think they got to about the 26-point mark. And then from there, they just didn't turn those draws into wins. Just weren't putting the goals away at the other end. Negredo's a fantastic striker, and I just think he didn't get the service he needed. And ultimately, I think that's what's cost us. Was he wasted, Negredo? Uh, I, I think I think he is a fantastic striker. And I think half the time, he, he lays the ball on and tries to catch it himself. I just don't think there was enough up there with him. Was it the formation? Was it the stubbornness of a coach? I don't know. I, I agree. I, I think that a lesson to learn that maybe if we'd have had a little bit more time for somebody to come in, we may have had a chance uh, to stay up. But I think Agnew had a thanks, thankless task there, to be fair. Um, I think he was quote, someone was quoted today. I think John Hendry was quoted today saying maybe even Alex Ferguson, Arsene Wenger couldn't have kept the Borough up this season on the little time and the firepower the Borough had. Borough had. So... I don't think it's Agnew to blame, to be fair. When did you realise? I mean, I, I know the easy answer is on Monday night after the full-time whistle, we realised we were relegated. But an awful lot of people had, had given up on, on fighting and staying in the Premier League because it just looked impossible. When did you realise we'd gone down? I think before Christmas for me, there was no sort of... The, the signings weren't coming for me. And, and I, I alluded right at the beginning when I said about, you know, I, I do feel a little bit let down as a Borough fan because... Why? I, I remember the, the chairman saying that we were going to give this a good go, you know, and, and I don't think we have. Um, now, who do we blame? Do we blame the chairman? Do we blame Karanka? I think it's a mixture of all, to be fair. Um, I just don't think we, we went into it um, with enough fight, if you want the truth. And the writing's on the wall. You don't get relegated against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. You, you get relegated over the course of a season and... And we just weren't good enough. Too many draws, you know, like Carl said, not turning them into wins, uh, not having that little bit of creativity to turn them into wins, and no second, no, no sort of like uh, plan B, if you like, at all. Kyle, how, how much do you feel let down? Quite, quite a decent bit, to be fair. I mean, the, the biggest letdown for me and the, the, the bit that I was hoping that we'd give it a good go was that week of destiny, wasn't it? The, 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 the few games, I think it were, were at Hull. Um, like yeah. the Swansea, the, Swansea the, Hull, the ones that are around that was the three, us, wasn't it? and you thought, well, do you know, what? if we if we've if mucked up till now, then fair enough. But give it a good go, give these teams a good a good run for the money, and we just we just didn't. And I think that is disappointing. I mean, I'm not a season ticket holder, you know, I, but I've been to a fair few of the games. But I feel for them season ticket holders this season because thanks, mate. I'm on. You finished. All oh, right. No, 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 no. Sorry, sorry. I said thanks for being sorry for me. Yeah, but like you said, you pay your money, don't you? You pay your money. 
And we've waited them seven years and it just it just hasn't happened. But like I said, we've got another, what is it, 46 games now as opposed to th uh, 30, 38 or something. So we can look forward to something, I suppose. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> um, just, I have renewed and I will stay renewed as the card's concerned. Uh, I'll be following the Borough in the Championship. Time for a break. We'll be back with more after this. Welcome back to RedArmy.tv. Now, before the break, we heard your views on social media, but what about your views in real life? James Barker's taken the camera out on the streets to find out what you've got to say about relegation. Thanks, Dave. Yes, for Red Army TV, I've came down to the streets of Middlesbrough to ask for fan reaction about the news that Middlesbrough is getting relegated. Well, it's disappointing, obviously, for the area because um, Premier League it generates more fans, all that sort of thing, more money. Um, They've gone down before and come back up, so hopefully they can do it. Really good chairman, you know, Steve Gibson, really good. I live in Hartlepool, so we've gone through the same thing, you know, disappointing for Hartlepool, now in what used to be the conference. But it's one of those things, isn't it? Hopefully they'll, they'll get back up there. Well, yeah, I think we've seen it coming during the last series of games and several decisions have gone against the team, like the penalty that was gifted to Manchester City. That was a dagger in our back, that, I thought. Yeah, it was terrible. Do you think that we'll actually rebuild from this? Depends if we get a new manager. I mean, Agnew ain't good enough, I'm. I hope a new manager comes in and then we get a new rebuild, a new team. None of them were good enough. I mean, it was a championship side after all, wasn't it? And there were quite a few people that we couldn't include in that section with the comments they were making. We'd have needed quite a few bleep tapes, to be honest, with that one. Um, so, obviously, everybody's disappointed. Uh, we would be. We're all Mad Borough fans. We want to see them do well. We've just been relegated. Uh, but the interesting question is, we've seen it with Newcastle, Kyle. They bounced straight back up. Can the Borough do the same? Can we be back in the Premier League in a year's time? I'd like to think so. I think with the right choices, with the right players brought in, I think we need a full clear out of the backroom staff. Um, with that, I think we, we probably could yeah, keep the core of the team and I think we've got a good chance, absolutely. So you think there's got to be a few changes within, within the structure? And there probably will be because mm -hmm. when you drop down from the Premier League into the Championship, you've got to have cost savings, economies, all that sort of stuff done, Mark. But have we got in the playing squad currently, and we are going to lose the likes of Negredo and Valdez and people, so what, what remains? Is it strong enough, do you think, to... Uh, to have a promotion push? Um, I, well, I think the, the signings of the likes of Gisted and Bamford was a, was a sort of a, a calling card, maybe. So if we go down, they are two strikers who can score goals in the championship, both proven. Um, I think we have got a core squad who will stay. Do I think we need to add to it? The big thing here is investment. You know, we spoke about Newcastle. They showed their intent by keeping Rafa as the manager. And you know, interestingly, just today they've come out with this press statement saying Ashley's met with Charnley and Benitez and agreed that all the money that's going to come into the club from being promoted will be given to Rafa to spend on players. Now, that is a statement of intent, isn't it? Well, I've heard that before. I heard our chairman say that we were going to give it a right good go. Um, but that's what the Borough need to do. You know, if you want to bounce straight back up and not spend another seven years down there, you need to spend money. And unfortunately, the majority of teams will get promoted from the championship, spend money to get out. And that's what Newcastle did. You know, they kept a, a top-class manager in Rafa Benitez to, 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 to go to Burton Albion, to go to Bristol City. You know, this is a man who's won the Champions League, isn't it? You know, so for, for me, they showed their statement of intent. That's what I would love the Borough to do. Uh, and that's, that's the only way they'll bounce straight back. You mentioned Rafa Benitez there. Kyle, Newcastle kept their manager. They kept hold of the guy who they brought in late on to try and save their premiership skin. Um, and he's been successful in bouncing back. Is Steve Agnew the right man for us to keep to bounce back? Like you, you were saying earlier, I don't think he's the manager to keep us up. He's definitely a good coach. I absolutely agree with, with that there. But he's not going to be the, the manager that's to spring us back up until he's in the premiership. I think what we do need is a proven manager. Someone like the likes of David Wagner, you know, someone who's who's done it with uh, the Huddersfield. Like, and I know padre has been uh, a few people have, have flung that name about. Now I know he's not uh, a great manager in the seconds he's, he's he's been at Newcastle, but I think he'll do the job for for the likes of Middlesbrough. Um, but we need a proven Championship manager, someone who can bring them big names in, someone who can who's got a good idea about the Championship works and what it takes to get back up. What's your thoughts on Agus? 
I couldn't agree more. He, he is an absolutely top, top draw coach, you know, and I don't think there's any players at the club or in the in the football league who don't know that. Is he the man to bring us straight back up? Is he the man to, to steady the ship? I don't know. I'd love him to still be part of the club, but you know, he's tried his hardest, you know, in a, like I say, a thankless task, you know, and he has brought some stuff from out of players. I mean, I think. I think Stuart Downen for the last three or four games. Been a better player. Been a better player. Mm. So he must be doing something different. Um, attitudes of players are different as well. Uh, whether he can uh, bring us back to win the championship or to get promoted is a different kettle of fish. It's almost tossing a coin in the air, isn't it? At this stage. You would generally yeah. try and look, like Carl said, for a proven manager who, who, who's going to do it. If they're not out there, you know, I don't know. But we have got a chairman who takes a chance. Yeah. OK, well, we'll come on to in a sec about possible changes. But first, we've got to catch up with the latest goings on in and around the borough. Here's Heidi with the news. After Borough's relegation last weekend, the attention has now turned to which players will stay and go this summer. Goalkeeper Victor Valdez's future with Borough is uncertain. A report said Manchester City boss Pep Guardiola, who managed Valdez during his time with Barcelona, is keen to see a reunion at the Etihad Stadium next season. Defender Ben Gibson has already been linked with West Brom and George Friend is also on the list of possible targets. Borough duo Dale Fry and Harry Chapman have been named in the England squad for the forthcoming FIFA Under-20 World Cup in South Korea. Fry will remain with the Borough squad for the game against Southampton this weekend before flying out to join the England team next week. The opening game is against Argentina on Saturday the 20th of May. Red Army is delighted to announce that our Facebook page has reached over 4,000 likes and nearly as many followers. So if you are on Facebook, please like and follow our page redarmy.tv for all the latest Borough news and updates. And if you have anything you would like to share with us, please get in touch. Email studio at redarmy.tv or via social media at Borough Red Army. And back to you, Dave, in the studio. Thanks for that, Heidi. Uh, we did run a poll this week, we tend to. Uh, the question on this one was, do we have enough in the current setup of players and manager to bounce straight back up? And it was a straightforward yes or no. 82% uh, said no, new blood is needed, which is, uh, which is a surprise. And it was a record number of entries that we had in a poll. Not surprising because the relegation's hot on the lips. If there's that many people want changes, where do you think we need changes? Well, um, if they're going to stick with the current setup, I do think there's a core set of players there. But to come straight back up, you need to invest and you need to spend money. Mm. And that's where I think the poll is, that's what it's saying. We've just all watched Newcastle bounce straight back up uh, on the last day of the season when they win the championship. So, and they've, like I say, invested heavily. So I think if, if you want us to come straight back up and I'd love us to come straight back up, we need to spend money. Is it that a couple of games left, which are meaningless for us now, other than pride? Would you use them maybe to try a few youngsters or do something different? Give Dimmy give a couple of games in the Premier League? Absolutely. I'd, I'd even give uh, Conor Ripley a good chance. I mean, he's had a, a fantastic few games, hasn't he, if, um, away in Scotland. Um, but I would, I would really use this, these last two games as a way of, of seeing these youngsters come through. And if they can do it, if they can establish themselves in these next two games... Because if they can do it in the Premiership, they're more likely going to be able to do it in the Championship. But yeah, absolutely. I'd like to see them younger players come through. Is now a good time, Mark? I mean, you develop talent, obviously, at grassroots level. Uh, there's always that chance if you pitch them into something really high-pressure cooker, meaningful Premier League game, you can destroy young players. But pressure's off now. Can you use it for, for something like that? In my opinion, dribs and drabs. Uh, I mean, them games are still there to be won. You know, Southampton at home, we're still going to have a big crowd. We still want to entertain. Last game in the Premier League uh, at home for a year at least. Exactly. So we still want to entertain. We still want to see the likes of Negredo scoring. And, you know, we know he's going to be a player who's not going to play in the Championship. Um, so for me, yes, you know, there is, we have got at Middlesbrough some young talent um, and bring them in in dribs and drabs. To do what we did before where we put a homegrown team out, you know, I, I don't think that's the way forward. I don't think that was the way forward that day either. Um, and also going away to Liverpool. Liverpool are a funny side, you know. They, 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 it's whether they turn up, you know. And they might need to win that to secure Champions League football or something. We don't yeah. know how the, the results are going to go. Yeah. Do we? So I, I think we just, you know, it, it's more for Agnew for me. It, you know, let, let's see what something he can do different. Mm. You know, see if he's got any intent to want the job. 
Carl, where do you think the game's going to go, Southampton? Now, what's, what's your prediction? What are we going to do? I'll go for it. I think the pressure's off. I think we might have a bit of more, a bit more freedom to play with now. Do a Sunderland at Hull, for example. I reckon. I reckon. I reckon we'll, we'll get a win. We'll get a win at Southampton. What's the scoreline? Two one. Two one. Two one victory for the Borough. How do you think we're going to approach it, Mark? Uh, I, I think Agnew will come out with something different. I honestly do. I, th I think you, you see it with players. The pressure is off, so they start playing more football. They start, you know, you know, keeping the ball nice and easy. Um, you know, I'm a realist, mate. I think the Borough will win 6 0. <laughs> think, oh, what? 6 0. <laughs> yeah, I absolutely love it. Uh, so, a 6 0 and a 2 1, what do you really think, Mark? Scoreline. I, I, th I think the Borough are good enough to win. You yeah. know, the Borough are good enough Odd to goal. beat Southampton. Uh, I, I think 1 or 2. Uh, we haven't scored that many goals anyway. Come on, get we? off the fence. What's your scoreline? 2 0. 2 0. Good lad. I'm gonna, actually, I'm going to go with you on that one. I don't often agree with that fella, but I do on this <laughs> occasion. Without a time, chaps, thank you very much. I'm sorry it was a bit doom and gloomy, but it's the end of the show. We've just been relegated. We'll catch you next week. See you.